This small website right here has one of the best SEO strategies on the internet, but not for the reasons you might think. While thousands of blogs and websites have been getting destroyed by Google and its updates, NapLab is growing and outranking giants like CNET, Forbes, and even the New York Times. So how does a small website like this continue to grow while thousands of other websites are dying? In order to understand how NapLab is beating Google's algorithm, you need to take a look at the creator, Derek Hales. This guy has made millions of dollars with blogging and SEO. What does Derek know about SEO the rest of us are missing? Well, the more time I spent researching his sites, the more I realized his success isn't only just because he's good at SEO. That's only half the story. You see, Derek's been in SEO and blogging since 2014. His first site, Sleepopolis, was a mattress review site. But there was something very different about Derek's approach, something most bloggers and SEOs never do. For each product review, he grades mattresses on factors like foam thickness, firmness, and heat absorption of the bed. He then ranks each brand based on these quantitative metrics. While other SEOs and bloggers are stuffing their pages with keywords to achieve top rankings, Derek is over here cutting mattresses open, outranking nearly every other site and making millions of dollars. His approach was very similar to Brian Lamb, who started the wire cutter in 2011. He ended up selling the wire cutter to the New York Times for over $30 million in 2016. Both Derek and Brian conducted firsthand tests of the products that were reviewed. While Brian's wire cutter testing was very good, Derek at Sleepopolis would go a step further with his approach. But let me circle back to that in a minute, because around this time, it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows for Derek. In 2017, Derek got into a heated legal battle with Casper, a $750 million mattress company. Casper was very upset because Derek favored other mattress companies over Casper in his rankings. Embroiled in this legal battle, Derek ended up selling Sleepopolis to a company called Jack Media in 2017. And get this, Casper actually helped Jack Media buy Sleepopolis. Isn't that crazy? Setting that aside, after Derek sold to Jack Media, he then started another website called Modern Castle, a home-focused product review website. When asked about Modern Castle, Derek felt that they ended up going too wide with their category footprint and losing focus. Yeah, I think the, the other major part is, is focus. And I think this is something that we've had to learn and relearn and hopefully learn for the last time on Modern Castle. This is actually a core piece of Derek's SEO strategy. I'm going to get into it a little bit later. So fast forward to 2021, presumably when the non-compete ended, Derek started naplab.com. Like Sleepopolis, Derek wanted to build the best mattress review site on the internet, except this time it's 2021, not 2014. The mattress affiliate game is 10 times more competitive than it was with giants like Forbes, New York Times, Sleep Foundation, along with other mattress blogs and even the brand's own sites, how is NapLab supposed to compete with that? What strategies is Derek using to insert his small site into the most competitive search results on the internet? Well, after picking apart sleepbobless.com and naplab.com, I've boiled Derek's SEO strategy to three main steps. But first, in order to understand how NapLab is beating Google, you need to understand how Google really works. Now, there are a lot of theories and speculation about Google's algorithm and how it ranks websites. But thanks to the recent antitrust case against Google, Google was actually forced to reveal private documentation about its algorithm. Most of the information was redacted, but a few key pieces of information were made public. Also, the slides were from 2016, but I'd imagine at least some of these systems are still in Google's algorithm today. And there's one slide in particular I wanna bring your attention to, a slide that revealed Google's three pillars of rankings. The first pillar being related to on-page SEO. What does the document say about itself? The second pillar being related to off-page SEO. What does the web say about the document? Which is mostly related to backlinks pointing to your site. But the third, what do users say about the document is mostly ignored by SEOs and bloggers. Google admits that they don't understand documents, but rather they look at user behavior to rank websites. For example, say a user visits your website from Google. How long do they stay? Do they engage with your content or do they immediately hit the back button? How does a website like QR Scanner rank number two for the word QR Scanner when there's not a single word on the page? It's user signals. Through positive user engagement, Google can conclude the website is relevant for the search query. By maximizing engagement on your page, you stand a better chance of getting top rankings and more traffic. You used to be able to get away with focusing on just pillar one and pillar two, but the websites who focus on pillar three are going to be the ones that win long-term in SEO. And that takes me to the first step in Derek's SEO strategy with NapLab. Derek creates clear user pathways to get users to engage with his content. While this sounds simple, Derek does three key things to maximize user engagement. The third of which was actually quite genius. Key number one, when you land on his page, the first thing you see are very niche specific data points. But here's where it gets really interesting because each data point appeals to different types of people who may be visiting his page looking for a mattress. This ensures 
ensures different people with different needs have a pathway to engage with his content. If a user comes to his page curious about how a mattress does with cooling, Derek has a data point for that. If a user comes to his page wondering about edge support, Derek has a data point for that. If a user doesn't care about all the details and just wants the quick and dirty, Derek has that in the user's face above the fold. The data points are compelling, they're intriguing, they draw a reader in with these color-coded backgrounds that are intuitively easy to understand. Most importantly, they keep people from hitting the back button. And that brings me to key point number two. His pages look very different than the other sites in their search results for his niche. This creates a sense of newness and breaks people out of autopilot when they're browsing the web. To help you understand better, there's this concept in social media called being a thumb stopper. As people scroll through social media posts, if you can be memorable or grab their attention, you can literally stop them from thumbing through your post. That's what NapLab is doing here. Now ask yourself, does your site look the same as every other site in your niche? If it does, what reasons do users have to engage with your site versus the other sites in the category? And this brings me to key point number three on Derek's approach to user engagement. The one thing that doing this brings it all together and that's tool tips. Now you might be wondering yourself, tool tips? How are tool tips gonna help me rank and get more traffic to my website? Believe me, I'm right there with you. Tool tips, if used correctly, can communicate a lot of context information to a user in a visually appealing way. Think of them as signage. It would be really hard for you to drive around in a new neighborhood without any signs, right? It's the same thing with websites. If there's signage, it's easier to navigate the website. Let's take a closer look to Derek's approach to using tooltips on NapLab. First off, Derek has tooltips right next to each data point in his reviews. The tooltip itself is colored pink, so it's easy to see, hard to miss. When you hover inside the tooltip, he explains his rating system, which gives NapLab instant credibility and trust. And then in that text, there's an internal link to learn more about each data point. As you scroll through the page, you then see these tooltips again in case you missed them from earlier. Derek has created different pathways for each avatar to engage with his content. These bits make the page more engaging and keep a user on the page longer, resulting in more traffic and better rankings. And that brings me to step number two in Derek's SEO strategy, great content that appeals to different audiences. While this also sounds simple, Derek's approach to content has a unexpected effect on users. There's this running joke in the SEO and blogging world about what makes great content actually great. Everyone says you need great content, but nobody actually can explain what makes great content actually great. That is until you read great content. When you feel like you're reading great content, you inherently trust the content more. After reading a NapLab mattress review, users know that the author isn't trying to push any particular mattress. NapLab reviews read more like objective reports filled with data. To illustrate this point, I want to introduce you to my good friend, Peter. Peter is a software developer. Peter is not a digital marketer. He doesn't understand blogs or SEO, but Peter loves the wire cut. Before Peter buys anything, he always checks what the wire cutter says. One day I asked Peter, Peter, wire cutter reviews are thousands of words long. Do you actually read all of that? And what he said next blew my mind, but it actually makes perfect sense. He said, hell no, I don't read all of that. But knowing they did all that legwork makes me feel like the recommendation is more credible and trustworthy. My guess is there are many people like my friend Peter, people who couldn't be bothered to read a 3,685 word product review of a Safa mattress. Rather, they scroll through and they see the comparison tables, the images, the branded YouTube video, and all the data points Derek has throughout his content. NabLab is optimized to make people feel good and trust the content as they scroll without reading a single word. But that's not the whole story because there's one more piece that's the linchpin to it all. And that's what brings me to step three in Derek's SEO strategy, and that's focus. Something most people struggle with but can unlock a massive competitive advantage in three different ways when it comes to SEO and blogging. I love this graphic to illustrate the power of focus. We all have the same 24 hours in the day. You can either divide your focus 10 ways and focus on one thing going one tenth the speed, or you can focus on one thing and go 10 times faster. And that brings me to the first way focus drives results. Derek has been focused on the mattress niche for 10 years. With so much experience, you learn all the nuances, the quirks, the subtleties of the niche. That flows into the data points Derek picks, his UX, and all the content that he puts on the page. He knows what his audience cares about and what they don't care about. He knows why somebody might purchase a mattress or why they might not purchase a mattress. Having all of that nuance in the content elevates his page above his competition. Focus makes great content possible. And that brings me to the second point about focus. By being in the niche for so long, Derek has likely built up very personal relationships with all the affiliate managers in the mattress niche. This allows him to get better deals. Say if a new blogger wanted to get into the mattress niche, 
they'd likely get like say 2% commission per sale. Instead of getting 2% per mattress, Derek's probably getting between five and 10% because he's been focused on the niche for so long. By getting better deals, Derek is able to get paid more per visitor that shows up on his site, which then allows him to reinvest into better content, his YouTube channel, and the flywheel keeps spinning. Focus makes great monetization possible. And for the third point about focus, I wanna mention another blogger who has unwavering focus, Kevin Espiritu with epicgardening.com. Like Derek, Kevin has had a mega success with his site, Epic Gardening. It started as a simple gardening blog, but over the years has evolved into a gardening media empire with a podcast, multiple published books, and a store attached to his blog, which he now sells gardening products. And get this, he raised $17 million in 2022 to grow this brand even more. And the best part is, he started this site in 2013. Can you imagine what's possible if you focus on the same project for 10 years? Inevitably, there's gonna be tough times. And if you're not focused, you'll likely get distracted, waste time, or worse, quit. I'm sure if you ask Derek, Kevin, or even Brian Lamb with the wire cutter, they all went through tough times but stayed focused. They didn't start a dozen niche sites in various categories. They started one and focused. Focus makes success possible. And you know what else you should focus on? Eat, which I have a video on and it's the next video you should watch. Make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.